Welcome to Unit 3, Lecture 2, Section 7.1. And in this lecture, we're going to talk about ecological footprints. So we talked a little bit about water and pH, okay? And we're going to talk about how those things working together um, in conjunction with the carbon cycle and with, in conjunction with human behavior and stuff like that actually have a change on the environment. And in this lecture, we're focusing mostly on what we do particularly and um, how it affects the environment. So the learning objectives are explain how the ecological footprints of typical Americans complain, compare to the global average. Describe the Anthropocene. So the ecological footprint is the total area of healthy land and water ecosystems needed to provide the resources that you use. It basically means how many earths do we need to live the way you live? Okay, and one of the things is that um, what happens is people are unaware of their ecological footprint and they're unaware of what we do and how it interacts with the environment. Um, just because we have advanced in a way that allows us to kind of take a step back from the natural world and just be like, oh, well, I have a house, I have, um, you know, clothes, I have things that, you know, keep me a little bit separate. I don't have to really hunt my food. And that's one of the things that we're working on trying to kind of understand is exactly how our lifestyle, um, and we all have varying lifestyles, but how our lifestyle can actually impact the environment. This is a distorted view of the world, okay? If you notice, the countries don't look the way they would look if this was actually a geographic. So in the little, the little corner here, you see it, you know, like the real world, okay? But what this is showing is actually what our ac ecological footprints are as countries, okay? And how that compares and how that relates to the rest of the world. And so you can see there are large, so red is the largest, okay, or the greater ecological footprints. And greens, um, the greens are the least, and then these kind of shaded tan, pinky areas are in between. So you can see the US here, all right, um, looks a little bloated compared to some of the rest of the world. And we're kind of in good company here with Europe. Okay. All right. So we end up having, um, so we have a disproportionate effect. Our ecological footprint is much greater than other countries, other populations. And that's one of the things that we're working to address. So the age of humans, the great acceleration. All right, in the 1950s, especially in the US and in European countries, most European countries, okay, after recovering from World War II, there was a lot of availability, okay? There was a lot of um, science, technology, um, the war effort of the, the war effort of World War II actually pushed advancements in science and technology to staggering levels, um, staggering heights, if you just think about the development of the atomic bomb. Okay, we, we learned a lot of the things through the development of the atomic bomb that are currently, you know, or were used um, for other purposes, you know. So a lot of times science, we do things for one reason, but we end up finding uses for them elsewhere. So what happens during the course after recovery from the World War II and moving forward in a lot of places were that the ability for us to do things, farming, the ability for us to store food, the ability for us to make things, okay, ended up going through the roof. Our science and technology had advanced to a point where there were so many things that we were capable of that we previously hadn't been capable of. And what that does is that's actually that actually allowed our populations to 
boon, um, socioeconomic growth, and all sorts of other things. And you can see here in this graph where from what, you know, what, 1920-ish, okay, 1950 hit, and we were already starting to go on the incline, but 1950 hit, and it it drastically changed, okay, our abilities, okay? And so with that also drastically changed our energy use. And you can see the blue line that was just added here. Our energy use also skyrocketed, okay? Because we put more energy into moving water around for farms and moving food around, okay? So now our food comes from a lot of different places. And think about it, in the middle of winter, you can go to the grocery store and you can pick up an apple, all right? Look around town in the middle of winter and how many apples do you see? Not many, okay? But that's because we have now created environments and technologies and, um, uh, practices, okay, that actually allow us to do things that ordinarily wouldn't happen at that time during the course of the year. All right, and coupled with that, our water usage, okay, so you can kind of see this red line that just popped up. Our water usage also increased, okay, because once again, irrigation systems for farming, okay, moving water around, all right, accessing water. Um, bathing, okay, clothes washing, all of that stuff. Okay, and as we've seen, our population has also increased. So we're looking at the turn of the 20th century really in, you know, ended up setting us up for a huge change, okay, in what happened over the course of those 60 years, 1950 to 2010. Okay. All right. Anthromes, we've talked about biomes. Anthromes are actually human altered biomes. So what happens is here, they're globally significant eco ecological patterns that have created changes. And you can see right here on the Eastern seaboard, we're part of the temperate forest biome, okay? Um, and moving up into the taiga or the northwestern coniferous forest or the boreal forest, all right? What, there's a few different names that we could use for leading up into New Hampshire and Vermont and so on and so forth, moving forward. But a lot of that we've turned into urban, okay? And an urban environment, um, or in certain cases, the suburban environment is much, different, okay, than what the original biome would be like. So if we just walk around town, if we walk around township, you see the difference in what the temperate forest would look like if we weren't here, okay, or if there was only a few of us here, all right, if we hadn't um, changed that environment in certain ways. Now you can see over here, on the west coast, all right, where we can see Yellowstone. So we talked about the wolves and stuff like that, okay, and all sorts of things. But you can see there's a vast difference in America, just in um, North, in the United States, you can see there's a vast difference in our um, country structure, just based entirely on where we live and what we've done to the environment. All right, so this was a quick one. I will see you in class. Have a great day.